The Marriage of Anansua by Efwati Sunderland. Cast Players All players in the play group together as a unified pool of music makers, dancers, actors, and as a participating audience. Provision must be made for able song leaders, one or two drummers and if possible, a guitarist. When necessary, actors simply detach themselves from the pool at convenient times to dress, returning when their roles are over. Property Man Sells primarily as property manager, manning a property stand on stage and distributing props on cue. In addition, he does see certain duties and is conveniently available as an actor for supporting roles. He can function, if necessary, as a prompter and quite openly, provided he does it with skillful informality. When free, he is responsive to the action of the pool of players or of the actors on stage. Anansi Anansiwa Anansi's daughter Post office crew An effective number other players are free to participate by doing make-believe business at a post office. Storyteller Akwesi and Akusia, a young couple. Postmen Surpassing messengers, two women, matronly. Chief who is chief's messenger, the image of a high-grade diplomat. Aya, Anansa's mother, Ekua, Anansa's aunt, Christy, Miss Christina Yamua, a fashionable woman, girls, about six of Anansi West age group, two women for the dead, messengers from the mines, Two men. Messengers from Sapasi, one man and two women. Messengers from Akati, two men. Messengers from Chief Wu as Chief, the diplomat, another man, and two or three women. Act 1. The players enter from one side of the stage which is a bare room, except for a small table and chair, center, and start the play with a popular song. Oh, life is a struggle. Oh, life is a pain. Oh, life is a struggle. Oh, life is a pain. In this world, life is a struggle. Citizens, life is a pain. In this world, Life is a struggle. Friends, life is a pain. In this world, halfway through the song, Anansi enters hastily, escaping from the rain outside. He is wearing a shabby raincoat. At the entrance, he receives an old umbrella from Property Man, and as he opens it up, shakes off the rain. He shakes his head like a troubled man. Then, taking over the solo parts of the song, he walks round with umbrella and loves, clearly indicating that the song he is singing recounts his own story to the players and the audience. When the song is over, while life is whipping you, rain also pours down to whip you some more. Whatever it was that man did at the beginning of things, must have been really awful for all of us to have to suffer so. He calls, Anansiwa, where is that typewriter of yours? Bring it here. I've been thinking, thinking, and thinking. 
until my head is head quaking. Won't somebody who thinks he has discovered a simple solution for living this life kindly step forward and help out the rest of us? Brother, could it be you? Mother, how about you? Nobody. Oh, the world is hard. As hard. The world is really hard. Taking off his raincoat and calling again. Anansiwa. Where is that typewriter I bought for you? At a price that nearly drove me to sell myself. Bring it here. He closes up the umbrella. Enter Anansiwa, dressed for going out, and receives the typewriter from property man. Oh, father, is it raining? Yes, it is raining. As rain, combining with life to beat your father down. He leans the umbrella against the wall. Oh, I didn't even know you were not in the house. Going and coming is necessary. He takes off the raincoat and hands it over to property man. Otherwise, nothing succeeds. I went to buy paper. Here is typing paper. Here is carbon paper. Here are envelopes. He takes these items one by one from property man and piles them in Anna's West arms. Sit down with the machine. Ah, I was coming to tell you I was going out. My daughter, it isn't well with the home. Therefore, sit down. Open up the machine I bought for your training and let the tips of your fingers give some service from the training for which I'm paying. I have very urgent letters to write. Just when I was about going out, Daughter mine, it's your future I'm thinking about, so put that machine down and get ready to help me. Take paper, get set while I reflect, get set while I collect my thoughts together. I am staring up all the brains in my head, take paper while I cogitate. Frowning with disappointment, I'm ready. Don't frown, my daughter. Have patience with your father. You are a child yet, in spite of your body's development. You cannot see as far as your father can. There you sit looking lovely, and it's exciting for you to go out in all your beauty. That is all you know. But, tell me, once you return home, here, afterwards, I will return home, here, why not? And when you return, will your fees for EP Secretarial School be paid? No. Haven't you stayed home for nearly two weeks because your fees are owing? And am I not still straining to find the money? Yes. I pointed to you that the principal of EP Secretarial College the miser that he is will remain merciless that he will not hear of you returning unless I pay, unless you are carrying the money in your hands, right or wrong. Getting more unhappy. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. Now let's turn our attention to that object there, that machine, that typewriter. After you have gone out and returned home here, will your last installment on that typewriter, which you need for your training, be paid? Eh? No. Good. So you agree there is a need? Oh, I know it. And on whom is the burden of that need? On you, father. Well said. Correct. Then, in that case, let me turn your attention to me a little. Take a look at my condition. I am not young. And yet, what are my prospects? 
So what can I look forward? After you have gone out and returned home here, will my hopes for a comfortable future be any better? The mattress on which I try to rest my bones after each day's ups and downs, will it have changed from a straw strap lumpy mattress to a sad bouncy download pillow? No, oh father, please. I haven't finished. Apart from things like that, and above all, when you return, will there be a better leak-proof roof over our heads? Let alone some comfortable chairs to sit in, a fridge in the kitchen, a car in the garage, my name on invitation list for state functions, embassies parties. Tell me, tell me, will I be able to go to memorial services? This week in a fine cloth, next week in a suit, or a different cloth, will I be able, if I go, to thrust my hand confidently into my pockets in public and take out a five guinea donation? Father, you have said enough, please. Let me add one or two things more. Imagine a great congregation at church on an important occasion, it is time for the collection. There sits the priest. There stands the gleaming collection plate in everybody's view. They call out, those born on Sunday, those born on Sunday, the Christians and Aces rise, walk up, and they set their money into the plate. Those born on Mondays, the Kojos and the Ajuas file up, they depth it. If it comes to those born on Wednesday, mark you, to the Quesis and the Kues, and my name is Kweku, tell me, how many times have I missed going to church because there is nothing in my pocket to deficit in full view of the public? And after you have gone out and returned home here, will I be any better off for going to church? I implore you, Father, I'm ready. Finally, when I breathe my last and die, will my coffin be drawn in a fine private hairs instead of a municipal hairs? Will the people who come to my funeral eat salad and small chops and drink good whiskey instead of chewing bits of cola and drinking cheap gin and diluted Fanta? Tell me, Father, why? I thought you... Begin the typing, dear chief of supper. So father, do you desire all those things? Haven't you condemned all of them often and often? You have pulled and pulled them, haven't you? Of course I have. Some of them are absolutely absurd, empty vanities. But you see, my child, I'm trying to use this index to show you how it is not well at home. So, set your machine talking to help your father out. As a result of a more severe cracking of my brains, I'm at last able to see a little hope gleaming in our future and I'm directing my steps towards it. Yes, step by step, my feet are in motion under the direction of my mind and I'm on the road to free you and me from want. I'm not saying I want much, but what if a few things can come my way? If a few things, a few things come our way. A few things can come. I'm not saying I'll eat chicken every day, but what about a little fish today and tomorrow a little meat on which I can count? I'm not saying my only daughter, Anansua, must be a judge of the Supreme Court. But what about her finishing her secretarial course? And perhaps, well, perhaps, having tried several times to get his attention by tapping on the typewriter keys, he forgets I'm here. This absent-mindedness of fathers is most trying. Oh, father, please hurry. What's that?
ready the type in address today's date and cancel that dear chief of supper it is too ordinary yes cancel that and put where i'm going to reside in this place oh mighty tree of asian origin mighty tree of asian origin rooted in the shrine of deity countless branches in which benighted wandering birds are welcome to shelter all of that all of that in the place where dear chief or sapa should go is this a letter how can it fit in fit it in chiefs adore the appellations and Anansi ties vigorously for a while. At a signal from her, Anansi continues his dictation. I have returned safely home after my visit to you. The little affair about which we spoke seriously occupies my thoughts. How can I ever forget that you have done me great honor? To show you my gratitude, I will guard the object of your interest with all the vigilance in my power. Now, I know that you who are seated on the ancient stools of our lands know the ABC of all cherished laws, all our time honored custom. Since forwardness has never been my fault, I will not even dare to drop a hint that the way is open for you now to begin oiling the wheels of custom. You who do not pay mere lip service to law and customs, but really live by them, need no prompting from anyone. Therefore, I will only add that I am very happy to be yours in the closest of links in the not too distant future. George Kweku Anansi, enjoying from her own performance, got it. Ah, father, your lips are sugared. The address is. Chief Sapa, the palace, Sapasi. Next, the same letter is going to two other chiefs. All you need is the appellation. Take them down in shorthand as you work. I'll turn the last letter over in my mind. I'm listening. Here's one. He assumes the proper stance. Prickly pear. Cactus keeping guard on your territory's border. To your left, your territory. To your right, the sea. Thanks to your prickles, the enemy bleeds. Thanks to your capacious leaves, those whom you love will always find within them water to refresh them. Very nice. Address. Tobio Clue the Fourth, Akati. Next, with relish and vigor, you are coming again, aren't you? You are coming again. Oh, where shall we sit? Where shall we sit? When driver ants are astir, all over the ground. And whose appellation is that? He whose appellation it is has command the priceless hand. He is not small at all. Chief of, he whispers conspiratorily into Anansiwe's ear. She knows in understanding. You said there was one more. Indeed, please type this one with utmost care. He recites with Chandra's vigor and at great speed. Oh, fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher, you have caused flame flashes to darken. You have caused I'm irreversible to come to a full stop. Blazing column of fire, whom says I will not be halted, has come to a stop. Masculine one destined to contend to victory. You consume fire. Abro. This you did, this you did, and therefore do nations say 
well done and well done a bro have they not heard your fame when they hear your fame do they not acclaim you in praise names fire extinguisher victor who deserves appellation and as why is so frustrated by the speed and passion of his performance that she has not been able to keep up with him. Have you got it down? How could I? I've never taken dictation at such supersonic speed before. Say it slowly, please. Relaxing now and severing his eloquence, Alancy repeats the recital. Finished and looking at her watch. And that's the end, isn't it? Nearly. The letter to this one is different, and it is brief. The thing you sent me by your most respected messenger has reached me, and it is so unexpected, so welcome that, whether I'm dreaming or not, is still an undecided question. Briefly, thank you, Nana. All is well with the object of your interest. I look forward to the time when it will become out of my custody into your hands most humbly and delightedly yours george kweku anansi finished with a sigh of relief finished address to chief who is chief chief who is chief town town unnecessary it will get there with just that. Now, please be quick, or we shall miss the mail. Umbogu interlude. The posting of the letters. Property man says the post office, with a counter and a pillar box. Two men from among the players rise to man the post office in a busy way. Please hurry, for time is nobody's friend. Hurry, for time will not wait for you. Anansiwa seals each letter and passes it to her father, who hurries to the post office, buys a stamp, sticks it on, gets the stamp officially, and slips it into the pillar box. The players sing in accompaniment, Hurry, hurry, hurry down there. Hurry, hurry, hurry down there. Time is nobody's friend. Time is nobody's friend. Time is nobody's friend. So hurry, hurry, hurry down there. Hurry, hurry, hurry down there. Time will not wait for you. Time will not wait for you. Time will not wait for you. So hurry, hurry, hurry down there. Hurry, hurry, hurry down there. Anansi has finished. He returned home. And as what brings him a chair, property man moves out of post office props, falling into the chair. I'm exhausted. Yes, I'm tired myself. You have done well. And now, if you will come closer, I have something to give you. Really? She moves closer. Anansi takes a bulging wallet out of his pocket and counts out money to her amazement. Ten cities. Ten cities. One hundred clean cities. Altogether, one hundred and twenty cities. Take that to the miserly principal of EP Secretarial College. My fees? Correct. You can return to school. She drops to her knees embraces the father and nestles her head around his chest. Oh, father! With pleasure. And now we shall see my daughter. Now we shall see which one of those four chiefs will make the best husband for you. In consternation. What? Very tickled. That's the story. You sit there smiling, saying, that's the story. What's the story? 
The lessons you've just tied for me to post. That's the story. What? Of course. Of course what? You are making me feel like crying. What have you just done to me? Hey, hey. Who said I wanted to marry a chief? Eh? Who told those old chiefs of yours? Have they ever seen me? Who told you they are old? You have never set eyes on them. They, of course, have seen you. Where? They have seen your photograph. Ah! That's why. That's why you went to so much trouble to get my photograph taken. You have made such a fuss. Take one of her. Full height. Sit down this time. Anansiwa. And turn your face slightly to the right. Oh, father, there's cunning in your head. You are to be feared. I am glad you don't underestimate me. I have found you out. The week after those photographs were taken, that was when you traveled. I found you out. You went on tour to see your chiefs. Certainly, I covered miles. I traveled the country, by bus, by train, by ferry boat. I lobbied for introductions into palace after palace. I listened with ears alert. I observed with keen eyes. I assessed everything before I selected the four chiefs to whom I could show your photographs with advantage. But why on earth four? Oh! Let's see, that covers north, south, east, and west. How exasperating. Oh, my father is selling me. He is selling me. She claps her neck and sings. The players joining in. My father is selling me. Alas, alas, whoever thought he would. Alas, alas. But let me tell you bluntly, I will never comply. I will not let you sell me like some parcel to a customer. Not ever. Not ever. Not ever. Not ever. My daughter is a child. I will not let you sell me like some parcel to a customer. She sings on. I will select my lover myself. I will never comply. I will not let you sell me like a parcel to a customer. Not ever. Not ever. She is a child. And do you really mean you're trying to tell me that those four chiefs of yours are satisfied with just photographs? Oh, the photographs have slain them. Have slain them flat. Your engagement is not far off at all. I will not take part in any photograph engagement. This daughter of mine does not know much about the world's ways. What's this you have done to me? I'm not a child. I'm 20. She's not a child. She's 20. And she still eats out of my pockets. Nonsense. I'll stop eating. I'll thank you if I stop. Say also that you will pay your own fees to the miserly principal of E.P. Secretarial College. I'll stop attending then. And, oh, you are making me miserable. Talk on. You will stop attending what? And do what instead? Give me back the fees in your hands and stop attending. You fool. When in two months' time, you could have your certificate in your hand. Did I say I will stop attending anywhere? Did I? But bluntly speaking, as for some old chief with 50 wives, that won't do at all. Never. She is close to tears with her hands covering her face. Supposing it isn't some old chief, as we ignorantly describe, but the finely belt, glowing black, Large eye handsome as anything, courageous and famous, chief who is chief.
Interested in such news? Chief who is chief? I mean himself. But who are we to have expectations about him? You may well ask who we are, but just the same. We have just typed a letter which I have posted to him. Amazed and then with excitement, I just typed it. Of course, I, Anansiwa, have typed a letter to Chief Wu as Chief. Proudly, you think I'm walking around this world playing Ludu? Searching for the copy. Is it I, here in this letter, she reads, the object of your interest? Is that me, father? Am I the object? Oh, I wish, I wish. Pompously, I will quote you what the racist monkey says. Racist monkey, is it he who says that? Unless he sees with his own eyes, he will not believe. He says, my eyes are my oracle. Therefore, my child, if you want proof that chief who is chief is interested in you, spread out your hand and look at what you're holding there. She spreads out her hand and is amazed. It's my fees I've got in my hand. How did I get that money? When for more than one month, I've been constantly struggling with poverty. I ask you. And I see what I'm founded. Read the beginning of that letter. Reading. The thing you sent by your most respected messenger has reached me. Stop just there. You are holding in your hand almost all of the full amount of that thing. That thing is the first solid proof that Chief Wu is chief. is not just showing interest with his mouth. He is willing and eager to oil the wheels of custom and therefore he has sent something for the maintenance of the object of his interest. If this is the case, what do I do now? She sits down to think. Stop eating. Stop attending school, you said. Oh no, father. Have a little patience, for I'm thinking about it. Deliberately piling it on, all the toiling, I have taken it upon myself to suffer for you. And you rise against me yelling, I will not let you sell me like some parcel to a customer. Okay, I will not sell you, so stop attending school and cut short your training and do without your certificate. Please, be patient. What? Chief Wu is chief, and I? Full of smiles. You think I'm walking around this world playing games? Embracing him. Oh, my lovely father. Oh, my lovely daughter. My foolish baby. I wish. I wish. So do I. So do I. Infatuated. Ah. You have to say ah. Ah. Hmm. Does he appeal to you? That's how it is, isn't it? Tell the truth. I'm amazed, father. You are a wonder. You see, as I'm standing here in my colo trousers, I'm not a man to be snared at. I circulate. I'm capable of going and coming. Feel my heart. It's stamping so fast. Let it thumb. Don't prevent it. What news is it that is so sweet? She panics suddenly. But, oh father, what's this you have done? Again? Have I done something else? The other letters. The other three. Pretending unconcerned. Yes. The other chiefs. The other three. Yes. 
So what about them? Picking up copies of the letters she has arranged beside the typewriter. Chief of Sapase, Chief of Akate, and this other chief, whose name is whispered in the ear. Four chiefs. But don't you see there's only one of me? She's almost in tears. What is this you have done to me? Who has been smiling all this while? Listen, my one and only daughter, what I have done is that I have organized around you a most lively competition. But aren't you afraid? Nasally, who said I wasn't afraid? Then, why are you doing it? I'm counting on human nature to help me disentangle it. All four chiefs can't be winners, don't you see? Child, your father is trying for you. Don't ask too many complicated questions. Your father can only cope with one step at a time. It's a very tangled affair. So it is. I don't deny it. But, believe me, my child, if it looks as if I have tied a knot, I haven't tied it so tight that it cannot be untied. A little more thinking is all that is needed to untie this knot. Have confidence in your father. Return to school tomorrow. Pay your fees and just concentrate on getting your certificates. Affectionately, do say something to comfort me. I'm tired. I need some rest. Smiling with sympathy. All right, father. I suppose I'll leave it all in your hands and trust you. Many thanks. Having checked on the rain outside, it isn't raining too hard now. It has quieted down, has it? Well, I don't feel so quiet with my life as I did when I came in. If you still want to go out, why don't you? I will, I think. She returns her typewriter to property man. Have a good rest, father. Accompany her out. Thank you. One and only. All shall be well. Property man clears the stage. Storyteller rises from among the players and receiving his staff from property man speaks to them. Anansi certainly needs a rest after spinning such a web. Players roar with laughter. I was present when all this happened. To gong players, calling. Gong reading starts up. Hence, players starts up clapping and a storyteller starts a song for the nest on Bogu and sings it with the players. She says, Mmm, mother. She says, Mmm, father. She says, How shall I find a mate? K legged ama, how shall I find a mate? Limping ama, how shall I find a mate? Two women from among the players mime in a playful dance the deformity the song describes. When it ends, one of the song leaders interrupts the storyteller. Storyteller, hold your story for a while. As held for you, brother. Song leader starts off the chant. Kweku Anansi said, he would. Kweku Anansi said, and he has done it. He has done it to mankind. And that chant, having passed away, let me admit that, I feel a little for Anansi. I am a father myself. To tell you the truth, I wish I had a bit of his kind of cunning. It's very clear that he knows the customs more than well. Notice how he has them at his fingertips, spinning them out, weaving them into a design to suit his purposes. It would be amazing if there was any among those four chiefs who didn't know that a man who desired to marry somebody's daughter can improve his chances by paying his way with gifts. Anansi has selected men who would do exactly as he hopes and do it properly too. Oh, Anansi, 
His ways are certainly complicated. It's very possible that these chiefs will be drawn right into his nest. And for this affair to turn into a share profit for him, if negotiations have only reached this stage, is there any law binding him to give his daughter in marriage to any of those four chiefs? There is no such law. Once more, he starts off the song, How shall I find a mate? and moves in to stand aside. Mbogua, Akwawi and Akwesia, Akosia strides sourcely in, crosses, and holds with arms akimbo among the players. Akwesi enters in hot pursuit. He looks this way and that, not noticing where she is. To storyteller, please, did a girl pass by this way? Do you mean that one standing over there? Aha, thank you, sir. Hey, Akwesia, there you are, aren't you? He seizes her at the waist of a cloth and pulls her from the group. Stridently, let me go, let me go. I will not let you go, I will not let you go. You cannot spend my dough and treat me so. You funny man, don't you know I am not your wife? Am I your wife? Don't you know you are? What law says that? Quotes me the law that makes me your wife. Oh, you make me laugh enough to drive you to distraction. How? How? And how do you come by such an assumption? I have bought you gifts. I have bought you clothes and shining jingling things for your neck and for your wrist. So this is your character. You keep coming to me. Aquisia, this is something small I have bought for you. You say, I'm reluctant to accept it, but you press it on me. You embarrass me if I refuse it. So you say, therefore, I accept it. And here you stand today in a public street, screaming out that I spend your door and treat you so. I have filed you in my mind for future reference. I'm bowling you out like this because you are so persistently saucy. I'm not your wife, so let me go. Ask your mother, ask your father. If you don't know, they do. Ha ha ha! Oil is dripping into fire. Akwesi, listen, come home with me then. And tell my parents I'm your wife and see if they don't give you a slap that will spark fire in your eyes. Do you suppose you are senseless as you are? Oh no, I don't think that at all. Quite the contrary. They are far wiser. They know I'm not your wife until after you have come to their home and place the customary head drink on their table. You see what I mean? And about time too, don't you think? He lets her go. Ah, now you are letting me go. That's better. I've gained my personal freedom. Bye. Anytime you are ready, bring my head drink home to my parents. And after that, I will stop when you call me. I will take care of your house. I will sweep. I will scrub. I will wash your clothes. I will quarrel sweetly with you to your extreme delight. Bye. She laughs and skips teasingly off. Ah, this girl is killing me. He turns back in a miserable anger. I say, young man, gentleman. Aquisi stops. If you know that this girl is in the wrong, why don't you take her to the court? Aquisi is hesitant. Sir, have you, by any chance, performed her head drink ceremony? Look, Dad, whoever you are, don't make me wild. He stalls out, driven away by jeering laughter from the players. There you are. As I was saying, it is possible for Anansi to profit from the gifts his daughter's suitors bring and not be bound by any obligation at all. With craftiness, 
Also, he has been careful to explain what his daughter Anansiwa stands to gain from his design, but nobody has heard him making any direct hint about what he personally will gain. He shakes his head, smiling. Anansi. He pauses reflectively. Listen, I have a feeling that he has overdone it a little. It might be well that Anansiwa was right to feel afraid. The process which Anansi is exploiting to select a husband for his daughter, and at the same time, as a means of getting maintenance for both of them, is full of snares. What if he cannot extricate himself? I hear footsteps. Someone is coming. He moves aside quickly. Postman enters with a letter in his hand. He minds checking the address of the letter against the address of the house in the street. He finds the house for which he is searching. Here is the address. AW-6615 Lagoon Street. Is correct. Testing the weight of the letter. This is the letter of some weight. He clears his throat. Is there someone to let me in? To postman, I greet you. Approaching him. Are you house number AW615? Do I look like a house? I didn't mean that, sir. Didn't mean to offend. Are you Mr. George K. Anansi of this address? May that never be. Anansi enters, a faraway look in his eye. But I don't think the man you want has gone very far. He might be that man standing over there. He joins the players. Signaling with a letter. Sir. Me? Are you house number AW615 Lagoon Street? Feebly. That's right. Letter for Mr. George K. Anansi. He seizes the letter and studies it. Happiness takes over. I say, Togwe clue. To the postman. It comes from Akate, does it? Seems like it. Right, you are. He leaves. Please with the contents of the letter. Oh. Oh. Yes. That's the way it's done. A postal order of words. He is thrilled. Oh. Oh. Not bad at all. Togbe clue. Cactus. It's not bad at all. You have started to make your inner nature evident. This is just the way it's done. He hurries back home. End of Act 1